I want you to have a look at the right hand side of the booklet. Because before we look at this, this is what I mean by a harder identity. Okay? So here, yeah, of course it's harder, it's longer and it looks messy. What do I do with this thing? Okay? Harder identities, there are three main techniques, methods that we can use to prove these kinds of things. On top of knowing what NCR is, on top of knowing what factorials are, you need to be able to do some other more clever things. Okay? Now, one more caveat before we actually do the questions. 90% of the time, maybe even more than 90% of the time, they'll give you a bit of a lead-in, right? They'll be like a part A, it's like, show you this, right? Or they'll say, consider blah, blah, blah. They'll tell you what to think about, and then you can go ahead and you can actually solve the question. But in a very small number of cases, you'll get no lead-in. They'll just tell you, and this is one of the examples, here's a result, off you go. From scratch, I want you to prove this, okay? So in all those cases, basically what you want to start with is the binomial theorem. And then you want to do something to it, which I'm going to illustrate over here. Have a look at this result. You don't need to write this down uh, because you've done this result before. It only takes two lines. To get from here to here, right? I just think about the binomial theorem. Okay. So for example, here's one way that I could write the binomial theorem. What am I going to get on the left-hand side? What sum of things am I going to get? Let, let's start from zero, go all the way up to n because there should be n plus 1 terms, yeah? What's going to be the term, the general term that I get? NCR? NCR? Yeah. I could write this a couple of different ways. I think R is probably the most sensible way to do it. I could do it with the R on the 1s and then the N minus R here, but that's, this is what I was trying to avoid yesterday, yeah. right? So this looks like the nice, cleanest way to write it, okay? Now to get from here, to here, like this, this one I just wrote down, totally quotable, right? Like that's the binomial theorem in a very simple form. And now what I need to do is pick a value that gets me from here to here. Do you see that? Pick a value that gets me from here to here. Clearly it's x equals one. So if I substitute in x equals one, watch what happens on the left-hand side. Um, you get the sum of these coefficients, times a whole bunch of ones, which I don't care about. And then over here, you've got one plus one. You've, that, that's it, that's it. You don't have to do anything else, okay? So there were two parts of that. You started with the binomial theorem and then you picked a value. You picked a value. Now have a look over here, okay? This is a, because this is harder identities, is you go a little more general. So one and x are particular things that you put into the binomial. They could be anything. Right? Any two terms you like, okay? raised to some kind of power. So this is an even more general way of stating the binomial theorem. Again, it's the sum of a whole bunch of things. What am I going to be adding up in this case? The sum of? Oops, sorry. Ten. Yeah. Of. Very good. And then I've got some of these and some of these, right? And depending on which term I've got, I'll have more or less or the same number, okay? So I guess I could write it like this. Oh. Oops, that should be up, sorry. And b to the power of... Great, because we know these always add up to n, don't they? Okay? So I want you to know, <clears throat> if I can just state this, just like you did over here, you stare at this and you think, what do I put in here to get me to here? Now in this case it was easy, because there's only one thing you needed to think about. Have a look at this guy. Mm. So, I've stated it in this way. Do you notice where my binomial coefficients are? Where the binomial coefficients are? They're all here, right? This is the thing plus thing plus thing plus thing plus thing. So this actually corresponds to, even though I've written on the right, this corresponds to the left-hand side. Do you agree with that? Mm -hmm. Okay. This, therefore, corresponds to the left-hand side over here, yeah? So I need to pick some values of A and B some values of A and B that will give me zero, okay? On the left-hand side, do you see that? Yeah. Okay. Now there's lots of different ones I can choose, but it's in my interest to just come up with the quickest, easiest one, okay? Now it's just an introduction, so this time I'm gonna tell you the values that I picked. I'm gonna substitute in, oops, I can spell it. A equals negative one and B equals one. Wait, so okay. can't you just say A equals to negative B? Yep. Yeah, you could. So we don't, do we actually have to give the number value? 
it will be easier if I do. Right. You'll see why in a second. Okay. okay. Because in, in broad terms, arithmetic is easier than algebra. So if I can deal with numbers, I'd prefer to do that because numbers like simplify out. Um, ones, they disappear. Mm -hmm. But negative b's never disappear. They have to stay in there until they cancel with something. Okay. So I'm going to just try this, try these guys out with this. Okay. So the left hand side is the easy bit, right? It's going to be negative 1 plus 1 to the power of n. That's going to become 0 in a second, which is good. What happens on the right hand side? Hmm. So it's the sum from 0 to n. n r. There's still no a's and b's, so I haven't done any substitution just yet. OK, now I'm ready. Here we go. Negative 1, 1. How are you feeling so far? Make sense? Okay, by the way, this I should have given it a name. This is method one, substitution. So you just start from the binomial theorem, the binomial theorem, and we want to substitute some values that will get us to the value, the result that we're trying to prove. Okay, have a look. Do you see we're pretty much there, in fact? The hard work was thinking about which values to choose, and you will gain a bit of an eye for these. Negative one, one, and zero, they're the most common values because they make things disappear. They simplify terms out a lot. Let's have a look. On the left hand side, I've got zero. On the right hand side, I've got this guy disappearing, right? He's a factor of a multiple of one, I should say. So therefore, he contributes nothing to all of these guys, right? I'm going to write this out as an actual series now because this is simple enough to work with. What's the first term in the series going to be? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm actually going to write it out. I go nc0 because there's the first value of r times negative 1 to the power of 0, which of course is by itself 1. Tick. Okay, have a look at the next value. The next value is for r equals 1, so I'm going to go nc1 times how many lots of negative 1? One. one of them. Okay, I need one more to complete a pattern, to establish a pattern. Dot, dot, dot. And then I'm going to get to the end. You can see now I'm just stating this thing, right? Except I'm putting this minus 1 to the end out the front where it belongs, since it's just a number. Okay? Uh, and you can see, this is, this is the result I wanted, I guess. Um, 0, I could write it left-hand side, right-hand side, around the way that I want. But I think you're probably happy to see that they're equivalent. And you're done. Okay? So something that looks intimidating and very messy is kind of the whole point behind binomial theorem. That it's like, yeah, it looks awful, but the binomial theorem itself helps you just package these down to something that's very, very manageable. The hardest part is to know what values to pick, and that comes a bit with practice. Okay? Shouldn't you put n, n? Uh, yes, sorry. Yeah, um, cross again. I'm ending on the nth one. Okay. So, what do you think of the first method? Substitution. Okay. If you don't get given any lead in at all, just start with the binomial theorem, write it down, and then look at what you've got next to what they've got and see how you can make a comparison. Okay? Does that make sense?